بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين نستعينه نستغفره ونؤمن به عز وجل اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وله الحمد وهو على كل شيء قدير واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين اما بعد ايها المسلمون dear believers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala highly glorified is he and supreme above all things says in the Quran أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم And when my servants ask you concerning me indeed I am near I respond to the invocation of the suppliant when he calls upon me so let them respond to me by obedience and believe in me that they may be rightly guided. We say, Sadaq Allah Wadim, and Allah the Mightiest has spoken the truth. Dear believers, our topic for today is the power of dua, the power of supplication. Some people translate dua prayer. That's not a good translation. Dua means to call upon to invoke, to ask for help, etc. That's the meaning of it. Because when we, we, we also translate Salah prayer, and it's not the same thing. Salah is formal prayer. In the words of Imam Qasim Ahmed radiallahu anhu, Salah is the devotional obedience. There's a whole process. When a Muslim is making Salah, you know it. Yes. Dua, you might not know I'm making dua. Because I don't necessarily, I know we raise hands a lot of times, but that's not even necessary. You can make dua without raising your hand. The idea of that is we were, we were taught that you raise your, you offer it like this because it's like you're receiving a gift. Dua, you're asking for something, so your, your hands are out like you're receiving something. So I just wanted to make that distinction briefly that even though the English is inadequate to convey translating dua and salah, just calling it prayer, that's inadequate. And I think we all understand that, inshallah. Also, dear family, it is not a week that goes by if you're on my chain of text messages that we're not asking do I for someone. We're always asking for do I and we must continue to ask for do I. So I thought we should just take a few moments to just really reflect on this a minute and see what the Quran says about do I and see what Muhammad the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the prayers and the peace be on him says about du'a ah, and hopefully we can understand the power of du'a. Ah. I know we're not into confessions dear family but I have to admit I'm not always conscious. When somebody says make du'a ah for me if I say pray for me brother pray for me make du'a ah, I'm, not, I'm not sure I'm always conscious of just what that means. The significance of that. The power of that how that changes things. Praise be to Allah. So let's look at the verse. The good news is Allah tells Muhammad the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, tell my servants that I hear their supplication. Isn't that reassuring family? Don't we need to know that? 
I don't know about you, sometimes I know I, I wonder if a lot of this because it ain't happening fast enough, all right? That's just our shortcomings. That's our inadequacy. That's our impatience. Even our Christian brothers and sisters have a saying that Allah is always on time. Might not come when you want him to, but he's always on time. I bear witness to that. So that's my point, dear family. That's good news for you and I to know, and I'm going to share a hadith with you in the second part of the khutbah that might explain to you what's happening when your dua is not answered immediately. But put a pin in that, we'll get back to that. So that's the first thing. Emphatically, Allah hears the supplication or the dua of everyone that calls upon him. Period, full stop. Then what does Allah say? Allah says that he invites us to also hear his invitation, hear his call. Don't forget, I said dua is a call. We're making, we're asking for help. Allah says, I have a call also. And doesn't that make sense? That Allah is blessing us every second, every split second. Doesn't that make sense? That if we're always asking him for our very existence, asking him for, for our very needs, for healing, for wealth, for health, doesn't that make sense that we should give him something as well? But guess what, family? You can't give him money. <laughs> well, then, ma'am, stop asking for money. You're always asking for money. That's not for Allah. That's for us. That's so when you come on here, come here, you're not sitting in the dark. That's so when you come here, hopefully, you know, it's cooling, cooling here. Or at least you can make wudu. The water's on, huh? That's what the, the that's what I'm at, Allah. Allah says, basically, all you can give me is your obedience. And that's what that invitation is for your obedience. Dear family, also, what do we look at? Look at the result of that. Allah says when you give him that and you believe in him, he will be rightly guided. Isn't that what we say at least seven times, uh, 17 times a day? <laughs> oh Allah, guide us on the mustaqim, on the straight path. And by the way, I'm not going to elaborate. The mustaqim doesn't go like this. It doesn't go horizontal. The mustaqim goes vertical. Yes. Do you hear the word qiyam in there? Qiyam, when we're standing in this prayer position, it's called qiyam, and we're upright. We're not in ruku, we're not bowing, we're upright. So, understand, it's an elevation. Yes, the mustaqim as layers. We're different, we're on different levels in accordance with our mustaqim, our guidance, in accordance with our with our obedience. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying one is better and one is worse. Allah will regulate that. Allah will work that out. Allah will judge that. But just understand we are on different levels. Not quoting, but also reflect in the Quran. Do you know what I looked when I was preparing for this? Dua at its root word is mentioned 212 times in the Quran. 212 times. What should be most apparent and obvious to you and I is what about the prophets making dua? Didn't Abraham make dua? Yes, he made dua for a son, but didn't he not also make dua as it relates to the Kaaba, as it relates to his son? as it relates to that region, how about this, that all of his offspring be leaders. Wasn't that a dua? How about Zechariah, alayhi salam? Didn't he pray for a son? He also prayed, and Allah answered the dua. See, brothers and sisters, this is what helps show us the power of it. In the natural world, Childbearing years for women ends with menopause. And the sisters know best. It could start 40, 50. I'm, I would say definitely by the time you're in your 60s, you're probably full blown by then. What is my point? My point is no children after that. 
So look at Sarah. Sarah is reported, and again, Allah knows best, she was maybe 100, 100 years old. I'm just, I'm just guessing. My point is, she was past childbearing years. And Allah blessed her with a child. Matter of fact, when the angels came to announce Isaac, alayhi salam, she kind of laughed at them. Don't you, don't you see, I don't play with me. Don't you see how old I am? <laughs> don't play with me. I'm past all of that. The point is what, Shakir? Allah does what he will. That's the power of Allah. That's the power of Dua. See, we look at it in our natural state. We look at it in what normally happens. But the miracle business means it's abnormal. The miracle business means it's not what you're used to or what you expect. Praise be to Allah. Allah also says in the Quran, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. O human being, here is a parable set forth. Listen to it. Those on whom besides Allah you call cannot even create a fly, unquote. So now where we're going. You have to make dua properly. And you have to make dua only to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brothers and sisters, our words may be saying one thing, but sometimes what's in our heart and our minds is something else. This could be why we're not getting our dua answer. And Allah uses the analogy of a fly because Allah knows the arrogance of mankind. Oh yeah, we create stuff. We, we develop science and technology. We're advanced in medicine. So sometimes we take Allah out of the equation. But Allah is the only way that you got to where you are by studying his creation, by him inspiring you. Yet he not only inspires the prophets and messengers, I would say he inspired, who's that dude? Isaac Newton. Who was the dude that come up with uh, penicillin? Who was that? Okay, I got the wrong one. Okay, thank you, thank you. I've been corrected. If Isaac Newton might be the gravity dude, right? Yeah. Praise be to Allah. You know, I get I get it to it, but I'm still gonna make my point. As I understood the history of the individual that dis discovered penicillin, it was by accident. Look at my quotes, by accident. He had left some something out, uh, a sandwich or something. He had left left it out for a while and mold developed on it. He also had a petri dish nearby where he was growing viruses or bacteria or whatever. And the report said that the mold from the sandwich flew into the Petri dish and it, and it, and it cured or it, it, it caused a reaction to let him know that this is how I can fight this. He wasn't looking for that. And I think the gravity dude had an apple fall on his head or something to help him understand. You understand? There are no accidents, family. This is Allah. And he's revealing and he's inspiring his creation. So, call on Allah. He used the analogy. Let me finish this. So you know the analogy of the fly. So you think you're all that. And you can't even create what we could, would consider a little nasty, insignificant creature. Not complex, but it is more complex than you think. We might consider it a lower life form not as sophisticated as the human being. So Allah uses the analogy to bring what point home? Here it is. Those whom besides Allah you call upon cannot even create a fly, and if they met all together for that purpose, they would not be able to do so. It continues. And if the fly should snatch away something from them, or snatch away anything from them, they would have no power to release it from the fly." Unquote. Now, brothers and sisters, uh, science might not have been my strongest suit, but here's the point. Why is that true? The first point is, bring all your people together with all your brilliance and genius, and you can't create the fly. And you think you all that? What if the fly lands on your food, which it happens often, and takes something from your plate, 
and you kill the fly immediately. Put them under a microscope, put a dissect them, open it up to get your food back. Allah says you couldn't even do that. And we found out why. Because there's something in the fly's saliva that when he touches or gets the food, it digests instantly, immediately. See, we think we all that. A lie is all that and three bags of chips and more. You understand what I'm saying? Praise be to Allah. But watch this. Because you still didn't get it. Feeble are those who petition and feeble are those who are who they present who they petition. Meaning what? We are not as strong as we think we are, and the ones we call upon to deliver us are as feeble as we are. Do you know there's some people, especially in the African culture, we call on our ancestors? What is that? Don't misquote me. Respect your heritage. If you're standing on the shoulders of someone, acknowledge that. But don't worship them. You can't call. They can't deliver you. They can't cure your cancer. They can't do nothing. But this is what we do. We call on those things that are inferior to us. And no disrespect to our Christian brothers and sisters, but our, our, our dear prophet Jesus, upon a VP, he's not to be called upon either. He is no equal. Even in biblical language, in the words of the Bible, Jesus of one of his peace is reported to have said, the one who is sent is not equal to the sender. Who is the sender? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. When they call Jesus good, why do I call me good? There's none good but the Father. And he didn't mean your biological father. He meant Allah subhanahu. So, dear family, you get it. You get what I'm saying here. So, in concluding this part of the football, what are some of the characteristics of the du'a? Because, again, family, du'a is informal. See, salat is, 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 uh, is formal, and when salat comes, you got to think, did I break wind? Am I in wudu? Did I make woo blue after I went to the bathroom? You got, you got to think about your status, your purification. When it comes to du'a, sometimes you ain't got time to worry about if you and woo do. <laughs> you got to send that prayer up right away. You get my point. So what is it? Du'a is flexible. Du'a can be performed at any time, in any place. Unlike salat, it's at stated times. What else what, what should we be striving for in our du'a? sincerity yes are you sincere in your offering you know dear family again no disrespect to our Christian brothers but they'll make a dua and it's so long it's a football I'm telling you I've been sitting there waiting in 10 minutes you still and, uh, and yeah come on a lie that dense. That performance is for the people. It's not for Allah. It's not. It doesn't have to be that complicated. Some of us only make du'as that we memorize. You don't have to do that. Yes. Some of you that I've made du'a for, say it's a medical issue, I might say something like, Oh Allah, you know what we want. The desired result is just a successful surgery. I mean, Allah don't need me to break it down. He know what success means. <laughs> you, you get my point. You don't have to worry about that. Don't get all uptight and, and anxiety over a dua. And guess what? Duas don't have to be in Arabic to be heard and accepted. Make du'a in your language. Yeah, we're encouraged to pray in Arabic for Salat, but that's because of the universality of it. That's so that no matter where you are in the world, but all two billion Muslims know how to make Salat. All two billion Muslims know what you're saying. That's what, that's for uniformity. But Allah understands English. I got news for you. Praise be to Allah. 
Yes, praise be to Allah. Now I'm going to say this and I'm going to sit down. Our Imam Waratuddin Muhammad radiallahu anhu said something that basically what he said, he defined what dua is, and I've already done that. An invitation, a call, you're, you're asking for something, you're seeking help. All right? He said, if you're not asking for something and you're not seeking help, it's not a dua. I'm not saying it's bad. I just want you to understand. Now, Allah put this on my mind. Again, you know I'm not uptight, brothers. Don't take nothing, sisters. Don't take nothing too far. But do you know that in our tradition, most Muslims will end a meeting with Surat al-Asr? Wal-Asr. Inna li insana la fi kusr. Illa al-ladina amanu wa amidu salihati. Wa tawasaw bil haqq. What I was over. So that's how most people, and, and there's something in the traditions that said that Muhammad the Prophet وسلم, used to end meetings like that. So that, you know, two things can be true at the same time. It's not a dua, but it is an authentic tradition. And we'll say, I mean, no. What is your point, Shakir? I heard one of my colleagues, and I liked when he did this. He would recite Surat al uh, Asr, respecting the Prophet's tradition, and then he would add a dua to it. Okay. Yes. What is your point, Shakir? What does it mean? By the token of time, through the ages, verily the human being is at a loss, except those who have faith and do righteous deeds and exhort one another to the mutual teachings of truth, patience, and constancy. I didn't hear no ask in there nowhere. It's revelation. It's haqqa. It's the truth. But there's no dua. So dear family, just a little something. If you want to end and say I mean, I'm not going to disrupt the meeting. It's all good. This is just for your information. Because we don't know where some of these things come from. They might be considered good. But are they as they appear to be? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi akhirati hasana wa kina darbana. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Amin. Allahu Akbar. In concluding this point by dear family, I'm always watching the time. There's a hadith by Abu Said al Qudri. Radiallahu anhu. I'm not going to read the hadith, I'm going to get to it. This is the hadith. I'm going to get to the point where Muhammad the Prophet وسلم, says that your dua is always answered. And I know some of us are still waiting from that 1997 dua that we are. But how is it answered? How can we understand this? See, brothers and sisters, you might not think so. Well, let me just say this, and then I'll get to that. First of all, Allah can answer our supplication one of three ways. Number one, immediately. That's the one we like. Immediately. Number two, it will go to your credit in the akhirah, after Yom Kiyama, after the day of standing. And this is where I was going to make my point. Some of us don't realize how much help we may need on the day of standing. You know, we don't take the approach that we're saved. We're, we're, we're in there. It's automatic. And the dichotomy there even, or the contradiction, is even my Christian brothers and sisters will say that we're saved, but even, 
even after that, say some people ain't going to make it. I'm not talking about people that don't believe in Jesus. I'm talking about their saved brothers and sisters not going to make it. That sounds contradictory to me. So you're not saved unless Allah saves you. Nobody else can save you but Allah. But my point is, that can help you get over on the day of standing. So Allah will store it up for you. He will save it for you. And number three, this is the one that I don't think we appreciate enough. That Allah, instead of answering your dua, he will avert a catastrophe in your life equal to what you're asking for. Now, I can raise my hand. I bear witness to that. That Allah has made that apparent to me. Oh, and that's so beautiful. Because again, brother, so maybe what we're actually asking for is not good for us. But because Allah loves us so much and is, and is so responsive, he said, let me do this for them. Allah had to reveal you love a thing that's bad for you. And you hate a thing that's good for you. Son of Allah, Wadim. Yeah. So, I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to give you some times when your dua is most likely to be answered. But what I will end on, Muhammad the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us that dua can change kadar. Let me put this down a minute. I might get a little animated. <laughs> Dua can change Qadr. How is that possible? If you, what, this, what this comes to mind, what comes to our mind, the main time it comes to our mind is later to Qadr. Later to Qadr, which is the night of honor, which is the night of destiny. The angels descend. Muhammad the prophet said clearly, Make lots of du'a in light later to Qadr, the night of power, because your Qadr can be changed. Just to remind you, what is Qadr? Qadr is a type of predestination, predetermination. I don't have time, I don't want to get into a whole book about study of the talks that we've given on this, that the scholars have given on this. Qadr does not take away your limited free will. You still have free will. You still can make choices, and your choices have consequences. Your actions have reactions. So that's part of the cutter that you have limited free will. And just real quick, really what the cutter is, is that Allah knows in advance your choices and your decisions. And he has set up parameters for us to operate in. Natural laws that depending on how you engage them will produce the cutter. Get with me later. I got to leave it. I'll keep it moving. All right. So, brothers and sisters, if Qadr cannot be avoided, isn't that what we say on one level? This is not double talk, family. I want you to understand, we have a saying today, two things can be true at the same time. And that's true. Qadr is, 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 is something that, that, again, what Allah intends, as he said, uh, when the rider was riding on the same horse with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, can I give you some advice? Can I give you some advice? And then he went on to say, what is intended for you will not pass you by. And what was meant to pass you by will not befall you. That's Qadr. But then the prophet says, prayer can change color. Two ideas, maybe seeming on the surface a little different, but are true at the same time. Can I give you an earthly example? You parents, have you not sometimes established things for your children? Let's say a curfew. It's established. Seventy times out of seventy times, usually they come home at the time that you have established. But then they come and make a little do out to you. Work with me, people. Work with me. 
call mom and dad. The thing going to start popping till 10 o'clock. Mom and dad, everybody's going to be staying a little later. And because this is special, this is a little different, please allow me to get, get home at midnight this time. Now, sometimes when that request is made, you still say no based on the circumstances. But if the circumstances are favorable and you like what you're hearing and you think it's reasonable, you'll say, all right, Johnny. This one time, you come in at midnight. Has not the copper been changed? Y'all don't see it. <laughs> what, established, what has been established, an exception was made. So when we ask Allah to intervene, when we ask Allah to change our health, when we ask Allah to, to, to whatever we're asking him for, he hears us, dear family, and he makes a change. So some of the times that duas are more likely to be answered. Number one, during later to the culture, the night of power, I want to express that in the depths of the night when you're making to hide you. Following a prescribed prayer between the Adhan and the Ikama, make a note of that, family. Between the Adhan and the Ikama, duas are answered. When rain falls, duas are answered. At certain times of night, at certain times on Friday, this one, this scholar says, when drinking Zam Zam water, watch this, when you're in prostration. Personally, I make most of my du'as in prostration. That's when you're nearest to Allah. That's, that's the position Allah loves you in because it symbolizes complete and total surrender. Now, we might not realize this, but I'm just being fully transparent. When a crowing rooster is crowing, but watch this. The, the prayers are answered. I had more hadith, but I'm not going to get to them today. So I'm just going to say this. The prayers are more likely to be answered by a sick person. And prayers are answered more so for the oppressed. Make notes of this. Brothers and sisters, this has to be encouraged. You say, well, my goodness, look at what's happening in Palestine. Look at what's happening in the Congo. Look what's happening in Sudan and Kashmir. What are you talking about, Shakir? Did you hear me earlier? Muhammad the prophet said the dua is always answered. Trust that. Believe in that. The Quran says, I hear you. I hear every one of you. So what is the plan? What is the why? What is the wisdom if it's not answered immediately? I'm not here to answer that. I'm here to let you know, brothers and sisters, that these are peak times. And believe it or not, some of the civilizations that were destroyed in the past were because of the suffocation of the oppressed. Allahu Akbar. So dear family, be aware of these things. Don't take dua for granted. Always be aware. When somebody asks you to pray for them, that's important. Remember I told you on, on out of fact, your duas are answered. There's many others. But please know that the statement, prayer changes things, is a true statement. I'm one dear family that I ask a lot for grandioso stuff and insignificant stuff. Yes, I take none of it for granted because it comes from his cover, it comes from his grace, it comes from his mercy. There are no accidents. There's only a divine, intelligent plan operating. So let's make do out for each other. Make do out for yourself. Make dua for the Ummah. Make dua for those that have returned to Allah. Praise be to Allah. Alhamdulillah, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Allahu Akbar. Allah.